my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and today's video is laying laminate floor so with nothing to do with gas or plumbing because the laminate floor here in this training room has been ruined from a leak in the roof so we've had a new roof fitted now so before we get trainees coming back in after lockdown I need to get this floor replaced so Katie's been on the web bought me some industrial uh, laminate flooring so the first thing I've got to do is clear the place out and get this old laminate flooring up so stop waffling Derek and uh, let's get on with it now place is cleared all I've got to do now is get the door off and uh, get this laminate floor up so no good standing or talking to you I need to get on with it so that's the door out of the way Start getting this floor up now. Now, before I can remove the floor in, I've got to take the beading off all the way around. So let's get rid of the beading. Getting rid of beading would be so hard. <laughs> now I've taken the beading all the way around, so this is a click floor, not a glued floor, so it should. Fingers crossed, because <laughs> it is pretty swollen this floor, it should start to come up. <laughs> and as you can see, once you get one started, it'll come up pretty easy. And that's it. All I've got to do now is whack the floor and uh, I can start putting it back down. Now that's the floor vacuumed. So let's talk preparation and let's talk about the different types of floors you can be laying this laminate floor on. Now, 
depending on the floor you're actually laying this laminate floor on will depend on your preparation. Now one of the things it says is you can't lay it on carpet or on carpet underlay. You have special different types of underlay for this laminate floor depending on what you're laying it on. So let's have a look at the different types of underlay first. <laughs> Here we are in b and uh, laminate floor section and you can see there's millions of choices. So let's find the underlay and let's have a look at that. This is probably the thickest underlay you're going to get. This is the fibre wood underlay and this is good for stopping sound coming through or coming, going down to the floor below. Can't say I've ever used it though. So this is the underlay you would use if your subfloor had underfloor eating. You would also need to put a vapour barrier down as well. But it's suitable for laminate flooring and solid wood flooring. It's environmentally friendly and it's made of natural wood fibre and it offers a quick and easy fast of the laying of the floors. It can also help to level the subfloor integrity of an unevenness of up to 2mm. So if you've got a bit of a wonky floor you can also use it for that. This is probably the most common underlay used. This is the polyurethane 3mm foam underlay which again stops sound. Now this foam underlay can be used in any room. It is suitable for the use of underfloor heating also. It's suitable though for less frequently used rooms. It improves the walking comfort and reduces the footfall sound from the room below and it also helps to level subfloors with an integrity unevenness of up to one millimeter. But this blue polyurethane uh, foam underlay is moisture resistant. So this could be used with the bathroom stuff where you've got the moisture resistant uh, laminate floor. Again, this underlay can be used in any room. And again, it is good for underfloor heating. And basically what it does is it stops any moisture related problems arising from a concrete subfloor. It improves the walking comfort again and reduces the footfall sound from the room below. And it insulates from the ground to prevent the rising of any humidity. It also levels out any irregularities of the floor level for up to 2 millimeters. We've also got this extruded uh, polyurethane underlay which clicks together. So, uh, I've not seen this bit before, but yeah, they've even got stuff what clicks together to make it easier for you to install. Good old bean king. Now this underlay has outstanding soundproofing qualities, but it's not suitable for underfloor heating. It has a simple to install thanks to this puzzle easy click, easy lay and easy cut system. The best value for money for all these underlays. It's reliable protection for heavy loads and it also helps to level the subfloor irregularities or unevenness up to 4mm. And then the last stuff we've got is the vapour barrier if you're laying your laminate floor on a concrete floor. So that's all the underlays you're going to need in any application for installing this laminate flooring. Again this vapour barrier is suitable for any room and it's suitable for the underfloor heating and it effectively stops any moisture related problems arising from a damp subfloor. So uh, always if you've got a concrete subfloor you need to be putting this vapour barrier down or the underlay with the vapour barrier built into it. Now the floor we're laying this laminate floor on is a wooden floor. It's on a first floor as well so uh, there is a storeroom below us. Now it says don't lay it on carpet. <laughs> Can't really call this carpet. <laughs> this is more like the underlay. But like I've just said the underlay is all about um, stopping moisture coming through and noise going down below. We don't care about noise. 
basically trying to get this carpet up because it's completely glued down onto the floor would be an absolute nightmare. So I'm actually using this as an underlay. I used it on the last laminate floor and it was perfect. There was no squeaking or anything like that. But the manufacturer's instructions does say we're not allowed to put it on carpet. But there is no pile in this carpet at all. It's a commercial carpet. It's, it's just rubber backed and it's just like the underlay. So read your manufacturer's instructions carefully about what you can actually fit your laminate floor onto because they're not all the same. But most of them do say you can't put it onto carpet. It has to be on their underlays. So, let's have a look at a bit more prep before we actually start laying this flooring. Now, when it comes to the edge of the room, so we've got a skirting board. Now, there's two ways we can do this. The first way would be to remove the skirting board, then leave a 10mm expansion gap all the way around the perimeter of the room to the edge of the board, and then put the skirting boards back. That will be your best finish, but I'm not going to remove the skirting boards because it's rented this property at the end of the day and we've got to remove this floor once we, uh, if we ever leave here. So the other way you can do it is leave a 10mm gap at the edge of the wall for the board, for the expansion gap, and then you use this quadrant beading to cover your 10mm gap. And that gives you a nice edge. Now you can see here the floor and the beading and the skirty board are completely the wrong colours. Uh, it was just cheap what we could get. So the best thing would always be get the colour of your skirting boards to match the uh, beading if you can't get a perfect match for the floor because it looks better if that would have been white. And also, if you are going to leave your skirting boards, always paint your skirting boards first before you do this. Because trying to paint your skirting boards after you've put this on, you're going to get paint everywhere. So there's another tip for you. So that's how we're going to finish off around this, this room. We're going to leave a 10mm expansion gap all the way around the edge. We're going to put this bead in, we're going to finish it off. Now, this quadrant bead in, you can either one tack it on with tacks or you can glue it but you don't glue it on the edge what sits on the floor you glue it on the edge where it goes to the wall because the floor still needs to float underneath this because that's the idea of hiding the expansion gap so that's how we're going to finish off around the perimeter now exactly how much do we need to order how much of the underlay, how much of the actual laminate flooring do we need to go to the shops and buy? It's dead easy. What you need to do is you need to measure the length and the width of your room because we're going to be doing it in the meters squared for the floor area. But if you've got an odd shaped room like we have, the easiest way is to split it into two sections. So this back wall, this is where the door is here. So this back wall is 1.4 meters long. This, where the door is, is 1.2 metres. So if I times them by each other, 1.4 by 1.2, gives me 6.68 metres squared for that little bit of the floor area. Though that leaves us now with this bigger floor area, which is the back wall where the kitchen units are, is 2.5 metres long, and the full width from back wall to where the window is, because the window is here, is 2.4. So if we time those two figures together, 2.5 times 2.4, gives us 6 metres squared. So now we need to add those two together, so 1.68 plus 6 gives us 7.68. But that's not what we order, because what we need to do is we need to add on 10% for wastage. So if we times this 7.68 by 1.1, because that will give us 10%, it comes out at 8.448 metres squared for the floor area. But you can't buy 8.448. Your nearest whole figure is 9. Okay? So we've ended up actually buying 10. Because that's how the packs came in. So we've got a little bit of uh, wiggle room 
and just in case any of the boards are damaged when you actually take them out of the pack. Now, like I've said, we are not taking the skirting boards off, we are putting beading all the way around. So what I need to do is measure the full length of this wall here, then add all those figures together, and that will tell me how much beading I require to go around the perimeter of the room. Plus 10%, don't forget, for that little extra wiggle room. So that's how easy it is to work out how much you need. So let's start talking about the planks themselves. So the first thing is, the floor in itself has to be in the room for more than 48 hours to acclimatise because they can contract and they can um, basically grow depending on whether it's cold or whether it's warm. So you always need to make sure the boards are left in the room you're installing them in for at least 48 hours before you attempt it. Now your underlay, they say you could leave that 24 to 48 hours. Um, but if you've got the planks, you can have the underlay, so they'll be left in the same room at the same time. So they become the same temperature. And the other thing is, when you stack the planks, don't just stack them on top of each other. Um, you need to put pieces of wood to separate them to allow air to circulate through. And never lean them up against the wall, because they could bow. So put them flat on the floor, stack them, happy days. Now, which orientation do we put them in? Now, the planks can go two ways. I could either lay it from this wall to that one, with the planks going in this direction. Or, I can go from wall behind me to that way. So the planks will go that way. Now, if this was a wooden floor and it was floorboards, they always say go the opposite way the floorboards have been laid. Okay, but this is a chipboard floor, so it doesn't matter which direction we're going to do that. Now it also says the light coming in from the room, if the boards are laid horiz uh, horizontal to the light coming in, you won't see the joints. So that's what we're going to do, but they do say if you do it the opposite way, it makes the room look bigger if it's a small one. So it doesn't really matter which way around you're going to do it, as long as you go the opposite way of your floorboards, or depending on your light source and stuff like that. So again, read the manufacturer's instructions and they'll help you which way to do the boards. But the most important part of it is your cuts and how your cuts are going to end up when you do your final cut. That's the most important part when you look at the orientation of which way the boards are going. So let's have a look at that now. Now, as we've discussed, our boards are going to go this direction. So the horizontal this way, running with the light. Okay, so we need to measure this length of wall here to be able to work out what we're going to be left over with at the end. So we know this is 1.2 and this is 2.5. So that comes out at 3.7 meters or 3,700 millimeters. Now we need to minus our expansion gaps which is 10 mil for this floor so it's minus 20 divided by how wide the boards are and the boards are 200 mil wide which comes out at 18.4 boards so we just need just under 18 and a half boards to go that way now this 0.4, if we times it by the width of the board, the 200, it leaves us an 80 millimeter wide board at the end. So as long as that 80 millimeters is more than a third of the width of the board, then that's a good finish. So we've nearly got a half, the, the, we're only 20 mil short of the half of the length of the width of the board. So that's going to give us, if we start off with a full one there, we're going to end up with just under a half of a board at that end, which is not a bad cut. And we've only got two boards width anyway, so it's not going to be much of a cut that way. So that's how we work out what we're going to end up with at the end of the, the end cut. It's as simple as that. It's simple maths. 
Okay, before you take your door off, you can actually mark the bottom of the door to see how much you need to cut off before you put it back on again. So the easiest way of doing it is, put your underlay down, whatever your underlay is, put it down first, whether it's the thick stuff, the thin stuff, whatever it is, put your board upside down on the floor with the door open, and then just take your pencil and go across the bottom of the door uh, on the top of the board and that will show you exactly what to cut off when you come to put the door back on so the door doesn't catch on the floor so always remember to do that before you've laid the floor now to give you a better finish at the door casing and the architrave what you can do is you can either get a multi-tool or you can actually use a, 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 a saw Again, underlay on the floor, get a piece of the board, lay it upside down and then you can place the multi-tool on top of the board and you can cut away the bottom of the door frame and the arc to give you a better finish or like I say you can get your saw and you can saw across that way. That will give you a nice finish at the door and you your 10 mil gap will be inside the door frame, not in front of the door frame, so it'll look better and give you a better finish. Always remember to wear your PPE equipment when you're using power tools, so always make sure when you're cutting the wood you've got your safety glasses on. And if you're doing a lot of kneeling down, which you will be doing on this job, and if you can wear knee pads, always make sure you wear knee pads to protect your knees also. I always remember that PPE. Now, this floor is a click floor and there are loads of different systems out there so you need to read the manufacturer's instructions on how these laminate floors click together because they're not all exactly the same some of them you have to the joints on the end you have to lift them and drop them in and this system is just put them on top and it clicks in so these are the easier ones to to install so that's enough of the preparation let's actually get on to installing it now, the first piece is the most important piece because this is what's going to make everything run parallel. And if you don't cut this right, then the rest of it's going to be wonky and it's not going to look correct. Now, to aid us with this 10mm expansion gap, all I've done is got a bit of the old laminate floor, which is 10mm thick, and then I can use that to go around to hold it in that 10mm gap for me. So what I've done is, I've placed a piece in the end there to give me my 10mm gap, and you can see from the board, it fits perfectly to my threshold. Okay, I'm just gonna cut that uh, tongue off there to allow it to, to go back. Now, you always work from left to right. So uh, that's the way you would, we would, we're gonna lay this floor. Now, first thing I need to do is, I need to cut here to allow it to go back. Now, <laughs> I'm using a Sharpie just so you can see it, but really you'd be better off with a pencil. So I've got my set square just to aid me. So what I'm doing is, I'm running that parallel with the door rack. I'm just gonna do a line. Now. I need to measure, so if I get my 10 milli gap, I need to measure how far that needs to go back up, up there towards the wall, which is working out at 45 millimetres. So I need to put a mark now, 45, no, 45 there and 45 there. If I join those lines together, that's 
that is what I need to cut out and hopefully the pen is going to come off the laminate. <laughs> that's why you don't use a lamp. That's why you don't use a, a sharpie on laminate because it don't come off. So that little section there I need to cut off which will allow it to go in. But I've also cut underneath there so I can just go inside that line there and it'll give me a, a neat finish. So let's have a look at that. Now the cutting, we can either use a jigsaw, which I prefer to cut laminate with a jigsaw, or we can use a hand saw, or we could even use a circular saw or a table saw. It's whatever you've got and whatever you prefer to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this tongue off. Always make sure you've got your safety specs on. So that's the tongue cut off to give us a, a neat finish. And now I'm just going to come inside the lines now to allow it to go under the door. So that's the cut done, let's get it in and see how it's gone. Now, <laughs> let's see how good I am and let's see if it fits. So I've got my two bits of old laminate against the wall and I've got my other piece ready for the end. So that should just slide in there and we should have a 10 mil gap there. Ah, perfect. So that's the first piece in are ready now to go and continue down. That was a good start. Now for my next three pieces, I don't even have to cut them. By cutting the tongue off the end, all I have to do is slide it in. Make sure I've got my 10mm 10, 10 spacer in first. And I've just got now to cut a piece around here. So, let's get on and do that piece. Now, to get this one in, I've had to cut it slightly different. I've had to pretty much cut it the profile of the door because you can't slide it under. So it should, if I've done it right, it should slide in. So under there, 10 mil gap there. And uh, that's pretty much how it's staying. So uh, what I would have what I could have done was I could have cut the board here and slid it under um, and then put another piece in, but it would have looked daft continuing the pieces down there. And I want to put as least amount of joints in this floor as I can because the trainees like to wet it. So let's continue along. Now I've got into the bigger room now, and basically what's happened is I was 10 mil out. So I need to cut 10 mil off this edge to give me my expansion gap because it's actually ended up right up against the wall. So I just need to take 10mm off the edge of here and then 10mm off the end of this plank and then the next thing I want to show is how we're going to cut it and how we get the distance to the wall. 
So first of all, I need to notch this by 10 mil, and then I need to notch that by 10 mil. So it's basically taking that edge off. Now we have to cut this board shorter now. So what we have to do is, first of all, we need to cut this bit off here. So we make sure we've got the board the right way and we flip it over. And we push it towards the wall, then we get our 10mm spacer and we place that against the wall to give us our expansion gap. We then put that in line with the board so we know we're running parallel, we know we've got our 10mm expansion gap. We then get our set square, we then run it parallel with the laminated part, not where the tongue is, the actual laminated part of the board. Scribe it, cut it, should be perfect length. So, here it goes, let's uh, try it. And that is pretty much perfect. So now what we can do now is continue the line along. Now technically to save wastage I could actually use that piece put it at the end there and that came from that end and start my way across and what I've got left at that end I can put back here. But I don't really want to do that because um, this needs to be more than 300mm and it's not 300 really, it's only 180mm and I want to make this floor as strong as I can make it because like I say the trainees like throwing water all over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put this into the centre of this joint so it's always got a full board in the middle of the joints. I can hide the joints under that side where the units are so we will only see the joints here and the joints there so as long as that distance is more than 300 then it will be a secure joint so that's my plan so let's stop messing around and let's get on with it Now, if you want to notch around the pipes for a radiator, there isn't any radiators in that floor to, well there is, but not the pipes don't go through the floor to cut through. So what you do is, you get your piece of board, I've just got a piece of scrap board, and again I'm using <laughs> a blue pen when, uh, a blue sharpie, which I shouldn't be doing. Now, I need to mark the centre point of where this pipe is going through on the board, so again, if I get my set square and just mark the line, I then place it against the wall. I then get my set square again, place it across, and I've now got a cross where I can drill a hole. So let's drill a hole in it. Now, got a 20 bill fastener bit and we're going to drill into the hole, so safety glasses on. So that's the hole cut. Now again, I'm just going to draw 
two lines from the center to the edge so from the center of the hole to the edge on an angle and again you would be doing this with a pencil not a thick sharpie pen now using a jigsaw I'm going to cut along these lines That has now cut a wedge shape out for us. And now we can slide the board up and we can place the wedge in. And we've now, we could use a cover to go around there but we need to leave that expansion gap around but we could get one of the radiator pipe covers to go around the pipe. Or we could just fill that in with some brown silicone. Now, we're up to the last piece now. So, what we can do is, we can put our piece we want the right way round on top of the piece below. So make sure it's in line and in the right place. Then we can take another piece the right way, place it flat against the wall and using this part here we can draw a line and that will give us our 10 mil gap hopefully now again I'm using a blue pen so you're better off with a pencil but I'm just using a blue pen so you can see it okay now we cut along that piece now that should give us our 10 mil gap to be able to get it in position so let's see if that works now, all I've got to do is see if it fits. Ah, oh, beautiful. And that's left us our 10mm expansion gap. All I've got to do now is measure this one to length and do exactly the same thing again. So, let's get it finished and then I can go. Again, just got to put it in the right way, make sure it's the right way. Make sure it's in line. Get another piece, place it on the top. Check to make sure it's right. And draw the line. So, let's get the last piece cool. So, again, let's try the last piece. There you go, fitted. Now, one thing I didn't show you was this little tool I have. So basically, I can place that on there if it's not gone in properly. And it's as simple as that. You can actually buy an installation kit for this laminate flooring which features the fitting wedges, the spacer or pull bar and the tapping block 
which you can use to hit the ends of the laminate flooring without damaging it. Now, if I was a drinker, I'd drink a pub dry at the moment. Not that we could go in a pub. So I'm going home for my tea and a drink. The uh, beading can wait till tomorrow. So, see you tomorrow. Now, I've just got the last bit of beading to do. I've done all the way around. So, I've got the beading into the corner there. So the first thing I need to do is make sure I do this 45 degree cut the right way. So what I always do is just put a little pencil mark to show which way I'm going to be cutting it because I need to match up with that one in the corner there. So that's the first cut I'm going to do to finish this last section off. Now cutting this bead in couldn't be any easier. So what I've got here is a mitre block. So you can use a mitre block and a saw or you can even use a hacksaw. But when you're using a hacksaw you're restricted by the handle. But the hacksaw because of the, the blade gives you a need to cut. So I've got a little handsaw which is going to give me more room when I'm cutting. For about a tenner you can also buy one of these bead cutters. They also cut uh, carpet gripper rods as well. So as you can see there is a gauge where you can turn it to the angle you want and then with a shearing action you can just cut them like you would using a pair of scissors. Not bad for a tenner. So I've got the pencil mark showing me which way to put it into the mitre block. So, when you place it into the mitre block, you place it on the same angle as what it would be on the skirting board. So you don't put it flat, you put it on the same angle up against the side of the block and the bottom of the block to give you the angle. And then you just get your saw and... You cut along your mark in the same direction, making sure you don't cut through your block. It's as simple as that. Now, I've cut my 45 degrees. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to make sure that slides right the way into the corner and marries up with that corner perfectly. So, that's the first part. Now the next thing I need to do is mark this corner, so I need to go right where the corner is and I need to put a pencil line to make sure I'm cutting it the right way because you, you, don't, want to make, you don't want to get to your saw and cut it the wrong angle. I needed it to cut that way so I've just done a little angle there. So now I can go and cut that. So now I've just got this little stretch to do. So what I've done is, I've cut another piece of beading with the right angle, which I can now put to the corner. And now, using my pencil, I can mark where I want to cut it. Now, I could end it here. So, or I could actually end it there or somewhere in the middle. If I go too close to the edge, it could end up getting kicked. Okay, so I'm actually going to end it just short of the frame. Mm, I might go all the way actually. So I'm going to end it there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to square the edge off. So I am going to cut this on a 45 degree angle. 
and then I'm going to cut the other edge off. So I've just got a slither and I'm going to turn it around, but I'll show you that once I've cut it. So that's where my final cut's going to be on that angle. So let's go and cut that. Now, can you see what I've done? Angled that for there, and then angled it as if I'm going back round the corner. So when I put that there, the little bit I cut off, you just spin it around, and it gives you a nice neat finish at the end, rather than a square end. So that gives you a far better finish. And it's as simple as that. All I've got to do now is tack it, glue it, Job's a good one. And it's finished. And it's finished. All completed, all back. And that's how I install laminate flooring. So, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up, or leave a constructive comment down below. If you're not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps and don't forget to hit that notification bell because we release videos mostly on a Wednesday. All I've got left to say is thank you for listening, thank you for watching, see you next time for the next video. Cheers.